Welcome to The Real Room. For those of you all who are just joining us for the first time, welcome to Real Talk Live. My name is Colanda. And this is Stanley. And we are talking about, is God really this hard? So you want hmm. to tell the elder where, we, where this has come from? Well, this conversation came from a conversation in that I had with somebody that's um, same age as me and young in ministry, grew up in church. Um, and they were just saying how a lot of times growing up in church as a young person that's saved, it was a necessary pressure put on them to live, to meet a certain standard. And in their pursuit to live, to meet that standard, they suffer in their social life, Mm -hmm. They suffered in their, um, you know, certain dreams and aspirations that they wanted to have, um, all because they were, quote unquote, trying to be an example. So they didn't. And, and I get it when you're in when you're that young in ministry. For instance, I started preaching when I was um, 17. So when I was 17, um, you know, the word was, OK, now you got to live a life because you're 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 an example. Now you have to be an example to people. But that's a lot of pressure on a 17-year-old. And so some, some people, now thank God I had parents that wasn't strict like that, but that allowed me to still be a normal 17-year-old. But, but there are parents in, that don't allow their child, especially when they're called to ministry at an early age, to still have that grace to be a child. So it's like they have to grow up fast, but in the midst of them growing up fast, they're missing out on their social life. And, you know, that's what we now call late bloomers and stuff like that. So they were say, is God really that hard? Does God really require all of that of me? You know, being young, being saved, you know, a lot of the things that we were taught in church, does, is God really that concerned about that? Because one person actually brought it up. I, I live my life to be an example to, to, to other peers in the church. And my be being an example, you know, they're, they went on with their life though. Like they, some of them got married, some of them had kids, they went off to college, they done dreams and aspirations and I'm still in the place that I am trying to quote unquote be an example. So mm. yeah, how do we deal with that? Wow. I know That's we, do, yeah, we, the, the church does have a way of putting pressure on um, young believers, especially and I think it may be okay to, I mean, there's a way to do it to make me understand that my, about my calling and the seriousness of my calling and the responsibility that comes along with my calling. But then there also has to be a balance. Like, don't just tell me, don't do these things, but show me, teach me, um, you know, perhaps a better understanding or some knowledge with that would have, you know, been a little better. I mean, because a lot of people do go to the extreme. That's why we have priests. That's why we have nuns. We have people who take vows of abstinence, um, of celibacy. Um, people who sell their all their worldly possessions. They become monks. It's because some people do take it to that extreme. Um, I don't know, Stanley. I, I feel like... It, but I, I've seen that with certain people... I've seen certain young people. Now, I'm not saying God can't use anybody young. I mean, we're examples of that. But what I am saying is, is that I think that the, the, the level of sacrifice, for instance, um, one of my professors in my religion class, she said something that made a lot of sense. She said growing up in church, you know, they made the kids fast. They made the kids do everything the adults was doing. And the kids were having a hard time doing it. And she said, it's not fair to make a child make that much of a sacrifice if they have not had that type of encounter with God as of yet. So the, she was saying that the way God works is that this, the more you experience of, of him, the more you sacrifice of him. But you can't expect a 13-year-old a to make the same sacrifices as somebody that's been saved for 40 years because yeah. they, they haven't, grad, it's a gradual thing. So, you know, I think that like Bishop Noel Jones once said before, he said, we have to learn to allow children to be children and then allow adults to be adults. That's why Paul said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. But when I was a child, I did things as a child. So I think when we see 
young people or young adults, we have to give them grace to realize, okay, they are not on the same level. They haven't been in the faith as long as I have. So I can't totally expect them to get it correct all the time. I have to give them grace to be young. That's true. Um, yeah. I also think though, there are some, some, some young people may be able to, to handle that. I think we also have to use discernment. We, have, we need God's wisdom because I've seen young people who it, the hand was so heavy trying to keep them on the fine line as soon as they could break away, they on the they they out there, and they never come back. <laughs> they out there, gone. so there definitely has to be a balance. But this this is the reason why we need to have a relationship with the Lord, so that we know. Now, I'm not going to say living a life as of holiness as we've been taught requires sacrifice. It does require sacrifice. Um, but how the Lord wants me to sacrifice may be different or looks different than how Stanley has to sacrifice for the Lord because we're two different mm -hmm. people. We have two different likes, dislikes. We are, we're on two different wavelengths. So the sacrifice doesn't always look the same. And I think maybe that, that was, that's the problem too, trying to make us all sacrifice the same way. That's true. And we can't or we shouldn't our relationship is different um, yep. with the Lord than somebody else's. Because I used, I used to be one of the ones, this is Todd kind of brought it up last week. I was one of the ones that did not want God to use me in church at all. I, I did not want anything <laughs> to do. And for instance, I didn't really start allowing the Lord to use me until we joined West Jackson. But the whole time I was at Cathedral, I did not do anything. I think the most I did was probably got on the usher board and, and helped with the sound. That was about it. You know, of course, as kids, we did all other stuff. But as a teenager, I didn't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> Were you embarrassed or you thought he no, was? No, it was because I always felt like people was telling me that I was going to be a preacher because my dad was. So I thought that people was trying to make me into being, not saying that I'm discrediting my dad. I'm proud of my dad and what he's done. But I felt like that there was something else I wanted to do. Like I wanted to, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted, my dream was to be the first black president, you know. So I wanted to be a president. Then I wanted to do this. Then I wanted to do that. So preaching was something that I never really desired to do because I always felt like people were saying, telling me that because that's what, that's who my dad is. He's a preacher. So I would do things opposite of that, trying to fight against it. Ultimately, the Lord won, but <laughs> do you know that he ultimately won, but I did, I didn't want anything to do with it. And so I didn't want, like, even, even when I got saved, I remember I used to always say, I'm not, I don't want the Holy Ghost until I graduate high school because I don't want to be deep because I always had a feeling once the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost, I was going to be deep and have a conviction and all that. <laughs> I don't want to feel bad about that. <laughs> and, and seriously, and I was one of the ones that was kind of like, you know, you know, everybody talking about their testimony, how, to, how they did this and did that. I ain't got no testimony. I'm gonna go get me a testimony, you know. Oh, I, was, <laughs> I did. I said I'm gonna go get me a testimony because everybody, you know, just trying to fight against the will of God, God for my life. So, but when I when I finally accepted the call, I realized that it wasn't my parents, but it was people outside that would try to put that unnecessary. Okay, now you you okay now you got to be an example. The blood is on your hands. The world is watching you. And although I do understand that, it was really no grace for me to be young. So I kind of had to grow up quick in ministry. I really did. Marcus brought up a good point. He said, it's a thin line between being an example and perfection. And I think yes. maybe that's the way people, some ministries make it seem like perfection is the goal instead of being an example. Because I would much prefer knowing a leader who struggles and maybe he struggles well, but he struggles because then that makes me feel like, okay, then I'm not doing something wrong mm -hmm. just because I'm also having certain struggles or whatever, just because I'm experiencing yeah. hardship. But if you teach me that I have to be perfect when things don't go well, that may make me second guess well, Lord, am I saved? Do I really have like, a home? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you know, like you got some people that be like, is God really this hard? Like, do I, 
like, do I have to be to every service every Sunday? Do I have to be at every church meeting? Do I right. have to be at the, the entire week of the meeting? Do I need to be there? Do I, you know what I'm saying? Is it wrong for me to take a vacation? Is it wrong for me to chill? Is it wrong for me to do like, is God really that hard? Is God really that concerned about it? And when you do things like that, you now equate your relationship with God to works. And the Bible says, for, we're, for by grace are we saved through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we don't work because we, to get saved, we work because we are saved. Right, right. So, you know, but, but a lot of people, they, they run into that area now where um, now I have to commit and do all of these. And then you got a lot of pastors that try to make people feel bad because they're not um, as committed to them yet being, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, you quit your commitment to the pastor and to the church. And you try to make that equal up to your commitment to God. Right. But you can still be committed to the church and still not be committed to God. Right. So having a position in the church does not make you say, I mean, That's Judas so had a position in the church. That's so good. Um, I had a friend one time and I had to, I had to like give myself grace in this area. When Makai started going to VPK, um, we had, I mean, you have to be to school by a certain time or at you know, after a certain time, they won't, they wouldn't let him come. So it started mm -hmm. becoming hard, especially like on Wednesday nights to go to Bible study, but it was so ingrained in me. Like I can't miss Bible study. I have to go to Bible study. And so like trying to go get him from school, hurry up and give him something to eat and then go to Bible study. And then we get home late. And now I got to make you try to go to bed. And you, you haven't had any time at home. You haven't played with your toys. You haven't like relaxed or anything. I had to give myself some grace and said, look, it's, these Wednesday nights may depend on what Makai it looks like when we get home, from, when I pick him up from school. Mm. And I have, I have a friend who also was having a hard time trying to get her children to Bible study. And because she was like, I can't run from one side of town to the other and then they not have dinner. And I don't want to make them eat out every week. Mm. And I think she mentioned it to some people in her church and they was like, well, what's, give them a turkey sandwich. And she's like, that's not dinner on a Wednesday night. I, I grew and did it. But we and can't especially let these churches today. Let let people, people, not, you know. Yes, we can't make people let us feel bad about not being able to be at every service or every time the church doors are open. We don't have to worry about that now, but when we return, God graces give us, gives us the grace for, and it's all differently. Like I have a family. So Stanley may be able to be there every time the church doors open. I won't be like that because now I have two children. So I have to mm -hmm. be, I'm considered of it. Brandon's why I wish my, my mama would. Now you know his mama don't, he gonna be and in we, church. And we gotta make people not feel bad for choosing, choosing their families or their other, you know, other commitments they may have. Mm -hmm. They don't make them feel bad because they chose to do that and not come to church. Because yeah. like uh, Todd said, she said, church responsibilities are not necessarily biblical requirements. Exactly. He just said, don't forsake exactly. the, the fellowship or the assembling of yourselves. But he didn't say how we had to. We're assembled tonight. So technically, exactly. we have a church now. The Bible says, if any two would agree as touching, agree as touching. We People preach your own and say touch and agree, but it's agree as touching. That means your agreement has to be so close as if you're touching. Then wow. Jesus will come in the midst. So as long as we're in the power of agreement, God shows up anyway. Right. But we got to get to the point where, you know, I think we're running, because put it like this. I would say this, but they're not going to like this. A lot of Man. things that we say God is, is, is going to send people to hell about and that he's not pleased with. A lot of this stuff, you know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb. A lot of this stuff is really extreme. Now, for instance, you know, you got some people that, that don't listen, to, that, that say it's a sin to listen to secular music. I'm saved now, so I can't listen to secular music. You know, I can't um, do this and I can't do that. Now, I get it. If it's, if you feel like it's going to cause you to, to fall back on your relationship with God and you're not able to do that, then I understand that. But if it's not and it's, it doesn't affect your soul, I don't believe God is that concerned about that. I remember when I first got saved for real this time. Like for real this time, I got rid of all my R&B um, CDs. I mean, Avant, uh, Jagged Edge, uh, Carl Thomas, all of it. Ludacris, uh, Jadakiss, Young Jeezy. I got rid of all of it because 
I'm, I'm saved now. I'm not supposed to listen to this stuff <laughs> no more. And so, but when I watch television, some of the music would come on and stuff like that. And I would almost feel kind of like, oh my God, I'm saved. I ain't supposed to be listening to this stuff. But you know, the Lord kind of had to free me from that. That's that as long as it doesn't affect your soul, you know, as long as it's something that's not going to pull you away from God, although there are some spirits attached to music, but as long as it doesn't pull you away from God, I don't think God is that concerned about that. Now, what he is concerned about is you lying and gossiping and bite biting and, and all that other right. stuff. That's the stuff that will send you to hell. <laughs> but these other little things, I don't think God is that harsh to where he doesn't want you to enjoy. Jesus went to parties. I'm pretty sure they didn't play gospel music at, at the wedding when he turned water into wine, which was his first miracle because they ran out of wine. But I'll leave it. We got to start, what we have to do is start making like these blanket statements and tell, and let people, make sure people know that the Lord deals with us like individually. So while it may not be, uh, it may, it may be okay for Stanley may be able to handle listen to secular music, but if my background or the Lord had to save me from clubbing and dancing and all this kind of stuff, then my conviction may be that I can't listen to it because it does take me back or mm -hmm. make me stumble. So yeah, some people now there are some people that are saved that can have friends that are not saved. I have friends that are not saving in the church, and you know, to some of y'all, you, you could you're not supposed to be yoked together with unbelievers, but some of y'all save people still unequally yoked. So I mean, I'm just saying. So, but you know what I'm saying? It does not take away from my walk with the Lord. You know, they know I'm saved. They know I stand with certain things, you know, and they know the type of lifestyle that I live. So they know that, you know, when it comes to that, I'm not going to do anything that's going to make my walk with God look any of any different way. And um, we put so many, um, <laughs> and we put so many, um, we just threw out so many things to where it's like God is, I really don't believe God is that concerned about that stuff. I think what he is concerned about is, is your soul, is your is righteous living, and I do believe in holiness and, and all of that. And there are, you know, God has specifically put in his word what we are to do. But if my thing of it is, if it ain't in the word, don't put it in the word. Right. Yeah, like don't, don't, don't make it. Go I'm ahead. like David, I... I'm, I do have safe, unsafe friends, but I don't really like talk to them or hang out that much. Um, so I'm kind of like David, but Brandon made a good point. He said, we can't be so focused on the church and we neglect our homes because That's true. Uh, the Lord didn't send you to your, like he didn't give you your wife or give you your husband, give you all your children for you to lose your family because of your commitment to your local ministry. So we, mm -hmm. have, to be, we have to be mindful. We just really have to just use common sense. Exactly. You really have to use common sense. Yeah. What your mom said. She, Dearest friends, I when I was there with you, you were always so careful to follow my instructions. And now that I am away, you must be even more careful to do some good things that result from being saved, obeying God with deep reverence, shrinking back from all that might displease him for God is at work within you, helping you want to obey him and then helping you do what he wants. Mm -hmm. Be governed by yeah. the Holy Spirit. That I believe that. And, that. and that's what we got to do. We got to let people know that because you don't hear it a lot. You know, a lot of preachers are not preaching it, but we got to keep the Holy Spirit relevant in, especially in this generation. I think, you know, I know we hear a lot of preaching about, you know, you can do great things and you're, motiv you know, motivating you to be your best self and stuff like that, but you cannot do it without the work of the Holy Ghost. So you, you have to, encourage people that, hey, you know, you still need the Holy Ghost at work in your life because he is the teacher. He is the one to show you how to walk this walk and, and walk it the right way, you know, regardless of what man say. Because people don't try to throw some crazy stuff at me. Um, but you, you're a preacher. You're supposed to be doing this. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I'm able to say that because, number one, I have a relationship with the Word of God. And number two, I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to tell me anything outside of the Word of God. So I can be able to determine if this is man's rules or if this is following the leading of the Lord. So, but you got to have the Holy Spirit operating right. fully in your life. Yeah, that's what we need to teach people. We need to let people 
let the spirit that we teach them about to rule them and not mm-hmm. try to rule them. Uh, we might need to do a show on that because people, it's, a, it's the, the whole culture out here trying to manifest things into existence without the manifester, the person exactly. who nothing exists without him. And then we're out here trying <laughs> to manifest it without the, deep, the sage and <laughs> so. yeah. Tasha Dilt said, um, can we define holiness or being holy? Woo! Okay, now, now she's stirring the pot. Yeah. <sighs> the Bible says. What did it say? <laughs> no, the Bible does tell us that we are to be, um, I think it's in Peter, be holy. He tells hope. I, we see this all the time growing up in church. You grew up in the church of God in Christ. This is, this is what they preach. Holiness or hell. And holiness was always preached as a lifestyle that you live, you know, no drinking, no smoking, no this and that, you know, and, you know, all of those other things that was living holy, but holy means to be sacred. Um, Sanctified means to be set apart, Um, but holiness means to be sacred. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of people took holiness as being perfect. Um, we're not perfect. The Bible says our righteousness is as of a filthy rag. So even on our best day, we're still not going to be good enough to meet the mark. That's why Jesus died for us and we now have grace. But we are to strive to be like Christ. So even in our striving, we are to be sacred. We are to be set apart. We are to try our best to live a holy lifestyle, being pleasing unto him. That's why the Bible says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. What Romans 12. Um, present your which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind the reason why god wants us to be holy is so those that are unholy can see what god looks like or yeah. get a glimpse of who god is because you may be the only jesus that they see yeah. so i do believe that yeah you can still be holy and for instance i've been to house parties and i've been to house parties since i've been saved preaching i've been to house parties with people drinking smoking they playing music and everything but I kept my composure. And in that moment, I was still practicing holiness. I didn't judge anybody. I may even dance with them a little bit or whatever. But guess what? By the time I left, somebody came to me asking me about their walk with the Lord, asking me about stuff out the Bible and stuff like that. How were they able to identify that? Because holiness is something that works within and then it manifests without. So people can, um, now I'm not saying I, I'm a perfect person. God knows I'm not. But I try to make myself identifiable as a Christian. That's just me. That's good. Um, so somebody made the comments said holiness. I don't know, maybe she Kim and I referring to what holiness means. She said living without sin. And I know that's what we like to think, but we cannot live without sin because we are sinners. We're born in sin. We're born in so there's no way I can live without it. So and I, I'm glad, and I don't know if that's what she's referring to, but I'm glad the point is coming up because I know a lot of people think that that that's what it means to be holy is to live without sin. And that's why it makes it seem so unattainable because we've let people feel like it's perfection. But it's not. Mm-hmm. It's like what Stanley said. It's not in your clothes you wear all the time. It's not in your hair color, your fingernails, all that kind of stuff. It's about when you are around other people can they see a difference? It could be in your attitude. It's in the way that you handle this election. It's in your character. The way you handle this election, were you holy? When you mm-hmm. were stuck in traffic, traffic, traffic today, were you holy? When you got yep. you know, a, a no the other day from somebody, did you respond in a holy holy manner? So it's not yeah. just it's not just clothes and what we wear, what we wear and where we go, but it's also your character, your speech, your attitude. Exactly. It's impossible for us to live without sin. Shall we 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 going to hell if, if that's the requirement to live without sin? Oh we are going to hell. Sin. Yeah. <laughs> but you know and that and that's the thing. Um and you know and that, that's something that we gotta understand. You know, God, we I don't know why we just cannot be honest with God. <laughs> God already knows we're not perfect. The Bible says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So if it is a temptation or weakness, tell God. Before you post it on Facebook and solicit advice from folk that, that don't even, that's barely making it on their own anyway, why not confide with God who is the Holy One that can help yeah. you be holy and that can help you live a sanctified life? Um, because yeah. it is possible 
Uh, but you cannot do it without the Holy Ghost. It, it's you just can't be holy without the Holy Ghost. It's it's no way. No, nope. it's no way. What David said, holding it is sanctification. <laughs> I would say this: sanctification is something that we do as a response. That's that's what we do. We sanctify ourselves, and the word sanctifies things like that. We sanctify ourselves to be holy. Um, but sanctification is that's when we say okay, you can't do this, you can't go that, you can't da-da-da, because we're making sure that we're, you know what I'm saying? We're kind of setting yeah. up boundaries, things of that nature. But you got folk that, ain't, that don't drink, that don't smoke, that don't cuss, but they gossip, they lie, you know, they 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 doing all kinds of things. You don't know what people are doing behind closed doors. But, so, they, wear, but the, they wear dresses, they don't yep, have yep. parts all up, they don't have tattoos, they don't have all these piercings. Yep. So they would look holy if somebody thought that looks were the, were the definition mm -hmm. or the way to be it, but then they don't have the right character. They don't have the right character. You and know, I do like, this about the Holy Ghost. And you don't want to be here during the tribulation period when he's not here to help you. Because you won't make it. It's hard enough and we got the comforter <laughs> and it's difficult. When the comforter <laughs> leaves, it's going to be hard. But I think we, we just got to get to that point, you know, and we got to stop, you know, and again, you have to let the Holy Ghost lead them. Like, you know, there was a time, if I can go out on a limb here, where some Christians did not believe in drinking wine. The Bible say you don't drink no strong drink. Well, if that's the case, don't drink no soda. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink sparkling water, you know, because that's considered a strong drink. <laughs> you know, and that's what people say. You, you, you can't drink no wine. You can't drink this and this and that. At the end of the day, let's put it like this. Instead of us trying to make people saved, we need to teach them to get in contact with the Holy Ghost that would keep them saved. Yeah. Yep. Oops, Can I have the it. right character and be holy and fornicate? Woo! A hard question. Cooking. <laughs> I don't want to talk about fornication because I talked about it earlier today and folk got mad. Matter of fact, I ain't even talking about it. I just asked the question. Folk got mad, so I'm going to let you have that one. I'm, I'm going to be silent. I have the right character and be holy and fornicate. I would say you have not fully set yourself apart if you are not married and you're having sex. But to be totally surrendered to the Lord means in every area. So even in my uh even in my emotions or in my habits, I surrender all of that to him. So even though I got this itch, I don't scratch it because I've surrendered it to him. So I don't get to, I don't get to address my own whims without his permission, if that makes sense. And that's basically what we're doing when you're not married and you're having sex. When you're not married and you're having sex, you're addressing your own physical and sexual emotional whims and you're doing it without the lord's consent because he doesn't want us to do that he wants us to even in that manner as a single person he wants you to be holy that that is the way he wants you to be holy so i would say no you're not holy you're not set apart in that area now that doesn't mean you don't have a good attitude in another you know something else no. but just in that particular area you you're not fully surrendered you haven't given him every part of you yeah, because you got a lot of sweet people that fornicate. Yeah. You got a lot of sweet people who are not saved. They, yeah. they, they're, they're so giving, they're so nice, they're so and serving. And they care better than the ones that are. <laughs> and ask me how I know. You know, that's why they they say all the people who work in uh, hospitality always got bad attitudes, but they such servants. But they be having the bad <laughs> attitudes. Cafeteria people. Mm-hmm. And itch is lust. So if I'm going to lust, shouldn't I just do it? I, okay. I'm, I'm going to say this. I will take the heat for this statement that I'm about to make. So send all your emails to me. They're going in the trash anyway. But <laughs> send all your DMs to me. They're getting deleted anyway. So send them as much as I will say this. We Lust is a natural thing. Yes. We preached it as if it's a spirit from hell. But lust is a natural thing. Yeah. Don't rebuke yourself. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help somebody real quick. 
you don't find and cast out the demon of lust. You control it and you put it under subjection. Yeah. <laughs> I used to pray like that. I find this lust spirit and I send this back to the pits of hell. And next thing you know, that person's still doing what they want to do. Until I realized and understood, you know, the scripture, lust is something that you're going to naturally have. And lust is not always sexual either. Because you could lust after a new car. You could want all lust is desiring something so bad to where you'll do anything to get it. And so it's, it's a work of the flesh. It's a natural work of the flesh. So are a lot of things that are natural works of the flesh. Yeah. So, and you're going to always fight lust. You're going to always fight temptation. You're going to always fight with things like that until the day you leave this earth. So just because you're lusting, um, that's when you have to rely on the Lord to help you control your lust because you got a lot of folk in the ground right now because of lust. You know, domestic um, violence is a very big issue nowadays, especially with young couples because of lust. They, they want you so bad, they don't want nobody else with you. So they'll blow their brains out. So if I can't have you, nobody else can. That's a lust thing. It's greed. It's lust. So we got to learn how to control our lust um, yeah. because you're going to always deal with it. And, and everybody deals with lust. You got married people that deal with lust. Single people deal with lust. Children deal with lust. Everybody. Oh, I don't care how much them old people lie to y'all to say the Lord is keeping my body. I'm pretty sure they are lusting at some point in their life. <laughs> but you got to, that's why the Bible says that we cast down imaginations and high things that exalts itself. When that, when that thought comes in your mind, you cast it down. You put it under subjection under God's word and you take authority over it. But yeah, lusting is not something that you should feel bad about because it's a natural thing. You just have to yeah. control your lust. And, every, and the Bible tells us that every good and perfect thing comes from God. That is a gift to us. Mm -hmm. So we need yep. to, don't, don't rebuke it. Because when you get married, you need, you need that desire to be there. Yeah. And she said, you can make that same argument for sex. I really can't. Yeah, I actually can't make that same design. Sex is not bad. Sex is not bad. Sex is not bad. <laughs> sex is not bad. It's the timing that people have sex. And Sometimes it's the people that they have sex with. Yeah. It's bad. So even if you marry, you could still have sex with the wrong person because that could be somebody that you weren't supposed to marry. But because God gave you free will, he allowed you to do what you wanted to do. So anyway, that's another topic. Talk about that later. But sex is not bad. It's just when you're out there living a loose and wild life uh, and you're attaching yourself. Every time you have sex with somebody, you're attaching yourself to that person. Right. And a piece of you is leaving with them and a piece of them is staying with you. And, you know, and when God sometimes, you know, I heard a theologist say this all the time. When God sees sex, he sees marriage. So that's probably why a lot of people won't get married because they've married too many people already. Ooh. So, you know, God made it for the right. God made sex, sex within the confounds of husband and wife. And I do believe that. And I do believe, let me say this, because a lot of people don't think I do. I do believe that fornication is a sin according to the word of God. The Bible says that you should flee it. But however, you know, we got to make sure that we're controlling our lust so we won't so we won't allow our lust to drive us to do that. Yeah, like my mom said, lust if not if if it's not under control, it will lead to sin. Exactly. And it would like definitely said, it can lead it can manifest or morph into jealousy, envy, and then anger. And then that's how, like Stanley was mentioning, domestic mm -hmm. violence situations are. Nobody can't have you. Started out as yep. that I want you so bad. And then it morphs into envy. I don't want you with your mama, your daddy, who that man you talking to, all this kind of stuff. Exactly. And then rage is next. Yep. Anger, rage, people. I'm telling you, you got to be able to control and that's the thing that a lot of people got to understand, you know, fornication is just the fruit of lust. It, because it was already, you, you've already did it in your mind. You've already thought about it. You already saw them naked. You already, you know what I'm saying? You already thought in yourself what you was going to do when you got them in that bed. You already, you know what I'm saying? Right. You already been, you, you already did it, you know? And so when, when the actual act happens, it's just a manifestation of what just took place in your mind. And it just manifested. That's how powerful the mind is. So you have to control your lust so you can, you know what I'm saying? 
You have right. to rely on the Lord to do that. You got and, and you and you have to rely on God to help you control your lust so you won't fall into that temptation. And we so and I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because this, these are the kind of things that people feel like disqualify them from being used. And then this will also have people thinking like, well, is God really this hard? But the Lord gave us these feelings. He gave us these emotions. He gave us these mm -hmm. desires. So then mm -hmm. he's not going to turn around and hold them against you for having them because they're natural. But we do have to bring them under subjection so that they don't control us or so that we're not leading with, you know, those things. But the, and that's what the church has to teach you. A man or a single woman and you, you know, you it's not, it. it's that's not, and it's not enough for just to tell them don't have sex, don't have sex. It's not enough to tell them that. Okay, I can still not have sex, but I can still sin in my mind because I'm lusting. So just because you don't physically see me having sex, um, don't mean I'm living holy because I could be unholy in my thoughts. You know, so we got to start educating this generation because there is a generation that really want God. And um, that's why I was kind of, you know, a little bothered by some of the replies because I made that post so people can kind of see where this generation thinks. Yeah. And this the church that's thinking like this. So that would have been a great opportunity for those that are stronger in the faith to encourage those that are younger. Hey, this is what the word of God says concerning this. This is how you can do this. Or, you know, but instead of, you know, us trying to say, don't do this, don't do that. This generation ain't going for that no more. They need stuff that's going. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We got to come with some evidence. Yeah. Uh, not just because I said so, yeah. or just trust me, or just do like I said. We got to come with evidence, some hard facts, this generation. And if I could be honest, the reason why is because we've seen so many leaders fall. And our generation, I would say millennials, we kind of came on at the end of that holiness or hell generation. But we saw a lot of preachers preach holiness and preach sanctification, but yet they had scandals about them. You know, they, they kids was doing completely opposite of what they was preaching. We, we've heard stories and we've seen things. So to us, it feels like, and if I could just be honest, it feels like a lot of people lie to us. So when you come to us about living holy and living sanctified, we don't want to hear it because we didn't see that in the lifestyle of those that actually preached it. Yeah. So now we got to find a way to restore that back in this generation because they don't want to hear it anymore because it, it seems... And we tell them it's possible, but it was like, well, if it's possible, why you didn't live right? Right. <laughs> you know, so yeah. That's good, Marcus. He said, you must be willing to put your life on display for this generation. They are not looking for perfection. They are looking for authentic what, authentic relationships and connections. And that that's true. I totally, I totally. And honestly, that's why I try to be like that. I try to be a, a honest. Yeah. I try to be open with some parts of my life, not everything. <laughs> But, just you know, know yeah. yeah, I think they just want to know that this is normal. That yeah. what I'm going through is normal. It doesn't make me a, a, a outcast, but this is normal. And then I can go through this and still be um, saved or disqualified. Let me turn to the side. I did. Mm -hmm. Somebody called my phone. They just want to know. Yep. Yeah. They just want to know that. Um, this is normal. That's all I wanted to know. When I first got married, some stuff that I was going through, I didn't want to share it with anybody. All I, but all I wanted to know was, is this normal? Because I've been in church all my life. Why am I dealing with this? Yeah, um, and that's the thing. I found yeah. just, who was willing to be authentic with me and say, girl, you're not the only one. That's all exactly. I need. And, that, and that's the thing. We made God, we have over... I was telling my mama this um, the other day. I said, mama, I said, I think we have over complicated God to the point that people no longer want him because we we've, we've made God so hard for people and he's really not. <laughs> it, it's, it don't take much to get saved. It don't take much to receive the Holy Ghost. I remember they said, if you went, you, you got to tear at the altar. If you ain't tearing at the altar. If you ain't got it like that. You ain't got it. You know, if that worked for you, that did, but everybody ain't got to tarry at the altar. Some people just say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and God will fill them. It's according to your faith. You know, God works different ways through different people, but I think we've made God so complicated to where a lot of people don't want anything to do with it because we, the image that we portrayed of him 
is a bunch of rules and do's and don'ts and obligations that he's really not that concerned about. I've heard somebody say, I want to say, oh, I think it was Dr. Darius Daniels. Um, he was, I forgot what the point was, but he was talking about, you know, can you imagine, not that this method is wrong, but he was just saying, just consider when we have people, because this is how we, in our black, in the black church, this is how we historically do it. Sometimes we, we you know, we ask people to come to the altar. More recently, we have also workers who are working one-on-one -on -one with people. But back in the day, we had everybody just lined up and made them speak up out loud. He was like, can you imagine being in front of a church of strangers in front of strangers and somebody asking you, do you believe out loud? He's like, what else are you going to say? But yes. Exactly. So sometimes we make it, we do make it hard for people who, you know, may want to be more, you know, private or who are not, who don't want to be as vulnerable in front of a whole audience, but who are willing mm -hmm. to be more vulnerable with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. So we do have to um, be more mindful that we don't make God harder than what he is. And I yeah. and like, it, when I finally realized like salvation went as hard as what I thought it was, I was like, oh God, like, not that it's easy, but it was like, I'm putting unnecessary pressure on myself. On yourself. You're not exactly. even requiring this of me. You're not even requiring. This is what man said you had to do, but God ain't requiring that. You know, God, your your mom kind of your mom made that point. His yoke is easy. His his yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. Y'all don't know that. Y'all don't know that. Y'all ain't saved. Y'all ain't saved. But anyway, <laughs> but God's birth. That's why Jesus said, "Take my yoke and learn of me. Take 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 what I have. Take of this and and learn of me." Take on this teaching, take on this lifestyle and, yeah. and learn of me, you know? Yeah. So yeah, God, God, um, so I said, there's nothing hard about God. There's nothing hard about God and there's nothing too hard for God, you know? So, you know, we just got to trust him and be honest with God. You know, we got to, and it's all about your faith. What Marcus said, God isn't hard to love. We are, yeah. he's consistent and never changes. We are the ones who have the emotional roller coasters and can be bipolar. I know he's so faithful, even when we're yeah. inconsistent. <laughs> he's just as inconsistent and moody as we want to be. And he we're cool. Jesus, we'll, we'll gossip about somebody and pray about him in the next second, and then finish praying about him and go back and gossip about him. <laughs> we'll restore he's somebody and judge him after we restore them. <laughs> we judge them first, we talk about them first, then want to witness. <laughs> What's, yeah, we got to restore our brother, but behind closed doors, you're killing and crucifying him. Come on, y'all. I'm so glad. I'm so glad my walk with God is not based on denomination. It's not based on church affiliation. It's not based on politics and this and that. You know, the Lord told me something last year. If that wasn't, okay, because because I remember growing up, people used to always say, you got to be holy because God can't use you being holy. But the Lord asked me a question. He said, could you still be holy even if I'm not using you? Mm. you know, could you still, you know, even if I'm not using you, and you got some people that are trying to live saved or look saved because they don't want the perception of them to seem like they're not. But if, if you're going to be you behind closed doors, just be honest with God and tell them the truth. Just saying. She told me she from the country. They didn't sing these songs where she from. Who from the country? I'm Anyway, you know what? That, that's tall. We're going to kick him out of the room. All right. Tasha Dillon wrote a long post. I can't read that. My eyes are weary. <laughs> I'm going to lose some people right here. I was talking to a young adult. Her issue was, of course, sex. She loves God with all her heart. She's working on, you know, trying to be better. And I simply had to tell her, you out here, give me, giving yourself to all these men. Are you struggling? If you don't give it up, at least make him pay a bill. Oh, and we're not going to get that kind of insights. <laughs> but you know what, though? I, I talked to a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine that calls me all the time, and 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 he talks to me about it because he was in a relationship with this girl and, you know, this and that. And, and I told him this. I say, man, listen, I'm not saying, I'm now listen. Now, as a believer, I am to tell you to abstain until marriage. But y'all already been active. So it's going to take time. You're not going to, 
if you've been out here on the go and you've been consistent with it for a minute, it's going to be very hard for you to change overnight and out of nowhere, not go back to that stuff. And that's not just with sex, but that's with anything. So we got to let people know that it is a step-by-step -step process. Like it's day by day. You know, if you got a got an addiction with sex and, and you're believing God to free you from that addiction, then when God frees you, you're still going to have those temptations and you're still going to have those desires. You're still going to have that. So it's every day you take a step further away from that problem or that addiction yeah. that you have. So that's what I try to tell, um, you know, people that may be struggling with that because you got a lot of Christians that are sexually active. A lot of them are sexually active and they really don't see anything wrong with that. But if we're going to say fornication is a sin, then we got to find a way to, um, and we got to find a way to show them, you know, okay, fornication is the sin, but let's get to the root of the problem. Let's deal with this right, lust. Right. Let's deal with why you're giving your body up to so many people, because that could be another issue. Right. So, yeah, God is, again, God is not expecting you to change overnight. He's, he's faithful to us. He's long-suffering. So yeah. he knows that you'll go a week living holy and go two days not holy. But then after two days, you will repent and try to get back holy again. Yeah. And he's willing to be patient with you through that process. It's people that's not, but God is. Yeah. That's a good point. That deliverance is a process. It's a process. Days you're going to be triggered. And days you're going to do well. It's just hanging exactly. out. Like, like people got mad at Kiara Shears, now husband. But he testified and said he, used to, he just stopped smoking black and miles and stopped drinking a couple of months ago. And he put it on Instagram. People like, I can't believe she even dated somebody. I've been with somebody about but if we say God is a forgiving God <laughs> and he's gracious, who's to say the boy wasn't already saved? He just was smoking and drinking. I mean, you got people that say doing worse stuff than that. And I, I'm just saying. Y'all don't want to give nobody a second chance. Y'all don't want to forgive nobody. Nobody. But yet ask the Lord to forgive them. I'm just saying. Everybody's not Perfect. Bishop Jakes even talked about this years ago. He used to smoke cigarettes. He just recently stopped smoking maybe 15, 20 years ago. But that whole time he was popular, a lot of people didn't know it, but Bishop Jakes smoked cigarettes. And everybody was shouting off his messages and everything. Now, we was told that smoking cigarettes is a sin. Yeah. Just saying. Now, he said, you know, the Lord dealt with him about it. No, he no longer smoked cigarettes. But again, it took it took a process for him to let that go. And we yeah. got to give people that grace to go through the um process. I'm with you. Me Marcus. too, Marcus. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't even I don't even I'm try to count. Answer. I gotta give I got I gotta give everybody grace because I lost count. My mama said, don't put yourself, but don't put yourself in position to sin. If you don't go up on the roof, then you won't have to worry about falling off. Don't tempt the Holy Spirit. That's, That's true. true. I, I agree with that. I do agree with that. that. That if you know, like, you're a recovering alcoholic, and then you know, like, on the way home, or your usual route is your favorite bar, mm -hmm. then you need to change the way you go home. Don't keep go going by there. that place and then tempting yourself and see if you can pass it this time or if you're going to stop. Just yeah, don't take do another that. So you won't good. win. You will not win. You will not win. But yeah, God is, and that's something I want to really encourage everybody. God is not really that hard. If you're young and you're in ministry, live, live, live and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you through this life, okay. you know, because some people may have to go extreme because that's their convictions. Yeah, yeah. You may not, but there are some that have to be extreme, you know, but you may not have to be as extreme with your walk. So the Bible says that we ought to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Oh. So exactly. we serve the same God, but I'm gonna say it like this. I know some people might take it the wrong way. We serve the same God, but even serving the same God is is different roles that each one of us take. My walk with God is not the same as Kalanda. Kalanda walk with God is not the same as the next person, but we all serve the same God. So whatever is your convictions, then you follow the Holy Spirit and allow Him to lead you through that. But don't allow people to put that unnecessary pressure on you, telling you to do things that God is not that concerned about. That's what they got to do. <laughs> they got to do that. 
you may not have to do all of that because your heart is pure and you, and you really mean God for real. You know, so it just depends. So yeah, everybody got their own different things. What is he saying? Sex is not an addiction. It's a spirit yeah. because you get addicted. <sighs> Y'all just want to talk about sex tonight. We're it's not, not an addiction. It's a spirit because you could be addicted to many things. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> many thugs. Thugs, things. Well, <laughs> retype the question, then I'll answer it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that one. Any more questions before we go? Y'all got anything else? I, while, while we're saying that um, God really is not that hard um, and we make him make it harder, let's not oh, don't I didn't know that. that you won't have to sacrifice in this walk with the Lord. You will have to sacrifice. It, this walk does require you to undergo certain trials. Um, so just, just be uh. mindful it's not like no. it's not like it's not going to be without any trials. It's just that the promise at the end of it for us is victory. So exactly. Um, your sister, I didn't know that was a support group. This oh, yeah. sexless tribe. It's a group of believers who are practicing celibacy and abstinence, and it's a great support. Yeah, there are options out there. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are single and you want to practice celibacy, um, and a abstinence, join the support group. You know, be there. You know. Oh, and that's another thing. I'm kind of glad she said it. And just because you're single and you're saved, it's okay to date. <laughs> and just because you're dating does not mean you're having sex with these people. You, it's okay for you to go out on a date and go hang out, you know, hug, kiss. I get it. Now, if you can't handle holding hands and kissing, stuff like that, and you feel like it's going to drive you that, then, you know, do what you got to do. Change it up. But it's okay for you to go outside and because I, 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 I've heard people talk about how their church used to make them feel bad about having boyfriend and girlfriends. You say you ain't got time for no boyfriend. You ain't got time for no girlfriend. But my question used to be, well, how did you get married? You know, so I'm just saying it's OK to date. It's OK to date. And just because you're dating, just because they see you out with one person one week and they see you out with another person next week, does not mean you out here. If I can say it. <laughs> no. Okay, it don't mean you're out here being fast. I put it like that. You're just <laughs> dating. So don't make people feel bad. Oh, you're a preacher, you're a missionary, you got no business out here dating. What? What am I supposed to uh, do? How uh, else are you gonna find your spouse? Thank you. I know <laughs> you ain't got no business out here dating. <laughs> I can do it. So yeah, so stop stop doing that. You know, all of that unnecessary stuff, just labeling stuff. Oh, I'm over God, I'm over we I'm are over human. like our salvation doesn't require us to be robots or aliens. God knows that we're human, so that means that He was going to use my desire for. Um, uh oh, her phone broke up. Oh, my, oh that, that means he He's going to use every part of me when He called me, and He already knew these things about me, He knew that I was going to want a man. He was going to use that about me. He knew that I was going to love shopping. He's going to use that about me. It's like, he is not, like you said, that concerned um, that he wants us to just cast all of our human attributes off. Like, I just don't, I don't want you to be a robot. I'm no, telling you, you see it, man. All of, you want all of us. He you likes it. Don't see people like that. Uh -uh. Think about it. People that live like that, they have no social life. Like, <laughs> They're mean, their attitudes are nasty. They're priests, they're, they are nuns. Those people who but even, even But even priests and nuns, you got black Pentecostals that, that are strict like that. And you invite them to a cookout and y'all may be playing Frankie Beverly and they sitting there looking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Won't speak to people. Just just live. God, God it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I, I know a girl right now, she in like, you know, I can't say that because she might watch her. I know a girl right now, you know, you 40 some years old, still live with your parents, still waiting on God, and all you do is go to church and still waiting on God because you want to live a holy life. You won't go to the movies, won't go hang out with friends, but you, you, because you want to please God. And hey, that may be your conviction, but I'm just saying. I live said, a little. Are people still saying that? That's what yeah. you said, live a little. 
<laughs> or are we still reflecting from the old way of things? People are still telling people that they shouldn't be dating. Mm. People are still telling people this. Did you see what Tasha Dimp said? What? She said, did you read? She said, that's why we ended up with so many gay relationships in the church, making folks hang with the same sex all the time. Oh, Jesus. Hello! See, they didn't want to hear it when I told them See, a few years ago. I, told, I if wrote I my first said book. that they would have threw stones at me for that. Yeah, they didn't want to hear it when I wrote that first book uh, a few years ago. I said we need to teach our young people how to date because we want our daughters to like boys. We want our sons to like girls. So we need to have these conversations. But um, you know, though, my parents were never like that. My parents didn't. They, my dad was like, yeah, y'all date, you know, get your girl. My, my mom and dad, they, nah, my mom and dad was like, just let us know, you know, keep, don't, we won't y'all out here, you know, making babies and stuff like that. But it's right. okay for you to ride and talk on the phone and stuff like that. You know, my, my parents were like that, but I do remember there were some parents that weren't having it, but then they grew up with questions about, well, I got these feelings and if I can't like this, then clearly I must be supposed to like that. Just saying. I, I watched a, um, it was a reel from a, it's not in Jacksonville, but it was a public high school basketball team. It's a girls basketball team. And you know how they've been doing the reels? Like on one side, one person may say, it may say like going out, staying in, and then the, like the friends of whatever side you go to is what you like. So in this video is a girls basketball they had like gay and straight and most of the team members were gay i said well god they like in ninth grade how do you know but this is what we're dealing with when we try to like how you were trying to ask questions and encourage discussion on today when we try to suppress discussion then people have to go and find their own way exactly. to answer these questions when we are even, not- Even with them. that discussion, you know, and then even with that discussion, you're wondering why sexual activity is so rampant amongst Christians because we don't talk about it. We know we, we've always said, don't do it, but we've never talked about, well, if you do it, these are the consequences of it, or this is why you shouldn't do it. We just said, don't do it. And then when somebody asks a question about it, you crucify. Right. Oh, this ain't the audience for that. What? This is the audience for this. So <laughs> where else right. can we go? It ain't the audience it's for nothing. People That's need to know that the same spirit that controls our mouths, that keeps us mild tempered and keeps us from flipping off on everybody, is the same spirit that controls our sexual appetite, our sexual exactly. desire. It's the same spirit. But when they get, like yeah. one thing is harder than the other then people feel like they don't really have a chance perhaps when it comes to sex. But same, it's the same God, the same God that controls my mouth. It's the same God that holds me. And even me as a married woman, I need the spirit's help to control my sexual desire. That's why we have so many married couples who cheat on each other because they don't have no stuff. They don't have any control. And nobody won't talk about it. I mean, we talk about purpose, Not we just about destiny. But nobody won't talk about this stuff. Right, <laughs> and right. I'm not saying you got to talk about it on a Sunday morning, but start a life group or something, especially if you're, if you're ministering to youth and young adults. And then you wonder why all the young people in your church pregnant, why they coming up with all these STDs, why they, you know, I ain't living fast. Y'all won't talk about this stuff. Then you want to sit think, them down when they get pregnant. And I think that is <laughs> an example of when we do need to talk about it. Like, I think we really need to do better jobs in surveying the people who we serve and see if we are meeting their needs. Because if I'm preaching prosperity every Sunday, but most of my church is on food stamps, I'm not getting the message across. But I need to survey you all to make sure you all are getting this because clearly I'm not doing something right. Exactly. But then you want to condemn them when they mess up. See, you ain't been listening to my teaching. I have, but this ain't what, <laughs> this don't have anything to do with where I'm at. If you right. notice all of your members of your church are sick and dying, then maybe you need to start preaching about healing and spiritual gifts so God can get the anointing to start flowing through your ministry because it's that's not a good sign when you get, when your church having funerals back to back to back to back to back like this. 
Hello, somebody. Right. Somebody operating in the power and the authority. So we right. gotta we gotta start educating these people, especially. Now, one thing I will say, I, I will say Tasha Demps and and uh, Sister Tot Jones, uh, uh, Jesus, Sister Tot Hall, even Sister Mary Jones, when you know we were growing up, they were our youth leaders, uh, along with so many others. And I will say, you know, although they taught us the spiritual side, we also had to, you know, they kept it real with us with the other stuff too. So, you know, so that's what I'm saying. Don't think these kids ain't too young to hear this though. Because trust me, they doing something. <laughs> yeah. Just because you don't think your little princess is out there living loose. I'm just saying. I bet you can't keep your eyes on your little princess all day. Right. Or your little king or prince, whatever they call them. <laughs> so yeah, we got to be honest and, and open to have these conversations so we can teach responsibility. That's what God is concerned about. Right. That. That was good. Though. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Good. We should talk about all the things. Next time we should talk about all the things they don't want us to talk about and just one big old. I tell y'all what, we'll do that. That'll be the last one for the year. How about that? Just talk about everything they don't think we should talk about because this is not audience for it. But this is the real room and this is why we created this platform is because I was a church baby with questions. Yep. And I need the answers. And so now that I have the answers, I wanted to create a platform to help other people who may have the same yeah. questions. I was just telling, um, my, well, reminding Marcus today that I don't know if anybody remembers, but one time Pastor Hall had made a comment about how these kind of discussions are needed because he said he had a young lady come to him and ask if it was a sin to sell her eggs so she can get money to finish school. That's a good question. And I'd say if she would have asked me, I would have told her to ask the Lord because I don't have no scripture to give you for that. But those are the kind of questions this generation mm -hmm. has now. Like I've had people, honestly, and I'll say this, y'all, please don't crucify me, but I've had women actually ask me would I mind being a donor so they can have a child. I thought about it, though, because they do make a lot of money doing that. <laughs> I, was, I asked my <laughs> other day. But no sense, though. I, did, I have. I have. But I didn't have any scripture to be like, well, you know, if you know what I'm, I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, right. I'm not yeah. Well, so these are happen. things that we gotta, yeah, all that ah, this ain't the time and the place. Well, when is it? <laughs> when is it? We gotta talk about this stuff. So yeah, y'all inbox us all the things. We're gonna do that next week. We're gonna do like a a, a a final 2020 show, and we'll talk about everything that the church don't want to talk about. So all y'all questions. That's, how we'll, that's what we'll name it. Everything the church doesn't want to talk about. White elephants. We'll talk about all the white elephants. We'll do that. Yeah, we're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about everything. No, Now, nah, we ain't going to gossip about nobody and put nobody's name out and all that. So don't do that. Yeah, but right. all the yeah. things that the church don't want to talk about, let's talk about that next week. Does everything need a scripture? That's a good question. T, mm. we need to keep that question. That's a good question. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. You might bring. You might need some backup I, on that I, one. I the answer is everything isn't. Be, what does it say? Some things are lawful, but everything isn't beneficial. That's what I. That's what my go-to is. And 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 because you can commit a sin, it it can't. For instance, just because it's against the law, doesn't mean it's a sin. And just right. because it's a sin doesn't mean it's against the law. Right. Like you can't go to jail for fornication. You, you can't go to jail for adultery. Now you can't go to jail for child molestation or you know having sex with a minor. But if the two overage adults have sex outside of marriage, you can't go to jail for that. So some people don't, you know, and a lot of times people equate sin to laws of this world. Well, it ain't that big a deal. Ain't not gonna go to jail for it because it is what it is. Even now with homosexuality now becoming, get, you know, homosexuals getting rights and things like that. They're no longer thinking that homosexuality is a big sin because it ain't against the law. Right. So we got to start talking about this stuff. Yep. Some things are moral. That, that's what, yep, that's Tasha Dim said. That's what Bishop Kinsey told her. Some things are moral. It's about moral uh, morality. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, y'all, dump all your questions, comments, all of that stuff. Inbox us. Uh, we'll, and we're going to compile it together. And we're going to do like a, 2020 get it off my chest type thing and yeah. uh, we may bring some people on and 
see what we can do. We're gonna try to make it fun though. Yeah. So yeah. That's that's you got everything. Yeah, that's it. You can go to continue in it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Games will lead to straight. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>